Hi, good afternoon, Fairview family. This is Eric Kincaid. It is uh, July 28th. It's Tuesday. It's uh, 1.30 in the afternoon right now. Putting this message out to um, uh, get everybody in our in our community on the same page and uh, get you up to date on where we are right now with uh, reentry 2021. Uh, we do have a special board meeting scheduled for tomorrow night. That's Wednesday um, July 29th. That meeting is at 6.30 at the Fairview Middle School. Our initial plan was to have that meeting open to the public and in the auditorium, much like we did our last meeting. However, uh, the new Department of Health regulations and guidelines stipulate that gatherings have to be under 25 people. Uh, the old guidelines, uh, just anything prior to July 16th, were 250 people in a, in a space, but now we are following the 25 person guideline. So therefore that's going to be limited to our, um, our board and our administration. Uh, we will have folks able to, to watch that live stream of that video of the meeting though, uh, on our YouTube channel, that'll be linked to both our website and our Schoology page. Um, if you signed up to speak, we are, you will have uh, an email from, uh, Molly Jones giving you your time to come in and speak. You'll be asked to, uh, to wait outside uh, of the meeting. You'll be asked to come in then during your time to speak and you'll have your allotted um, time to present um, anything that you would like to share with the board at that time. Th that time will actually be at the start of the meeting. So it'll be from 6.30 to seven o'clock. We're carving out that first 30 minutes for public comment. So if you signed up to speak, you'll have an opportunity to do that at that time. You'll get specific information uh, in an email from Molly today. Um, I did want to address all of the questions that are coming in. So it's 1.30 today. We spent the morning looking at the questions and making certain that 90% uh, of those questions are incorporated in the presentation that we'll be sharing with the board on Wednesday night. So if your question is not addressed, it probably won't be addressed um, back to you in a, in a, uh, in a Q&A format because we're going to try to incorporate it into our presentation Wednesday night. But if for any reason your question isn't answered Wednesday night, please feel free to reach reach back out or just recopy it to us and say, hey, this wasn't addressed. Um, I do have a couple of things here that I know will not be in the presentation that I will try to address here in this, uh, in this particular video. Uh, there were a lot of um, uh, questions about the updated re-entry plan. Uh, I, I will be putting that out this afternoon. We have some minor modifications from the last time you saw that plan. Um, and I'll tell you what those modifications are in a minute, but those will be, um, that will pl that plan will be updated on our website. And I'll also put the link back on uh, Schoology so that you can access it. And that will be up and running uh, later today. Um, I want to, uh, one of my goals here is, is really just for complete transparency um, so that there are no surprises for Wednesday night. Our board already knows this. Uh, I've given them an update and I wanna give our community an update right now as well. Uh, we are going to present tomorrow night uh, two options to the board uh, in our reentry plan. If you recall the, old, the original reentry plan, it had three phases, right? We had the red phase, we had the yellow phase and the green phase. Um, we understand that the names of those phases were a little confusing because it's, we just tend to, to correlate the phase with the phase of our county is in, in terms of, of COVID. Um, so we're trying to get away from those color designations uh, for Fairview. So we're gonna be referring to our red plan as a remote education plan, a remote learning. And we're gonna be referring to our yellow plan as a hybrid learning plan and the green plan as modified traditional. So those will be the names that you'll start hearing from, from this point on. Um, but for Wednesday night, we are gonna be making two options available to the board for them to choose. Um, and green, the, green the, the former green plan, the modified traditional will not be one of those options to start the year that, that our administration is going to recommend. We are gonna give the board two options, however, uh, of a hybrid and a remote entry um, for the first day of school. So the hybrid plan will look very similar to what we talked about before. It'll be kindergarten through sixth grade coming to school on campus and seventh through 12th grade uh, learning remotely uh, from home. One modification to that, it's, it's a pretty significant modification to that, and this was based off of community and board feedback that we received, is that uh, we will bring in the seven through 12 students on Fridays 
um, maybe not at the very, very beginning of the year, but, but soon after, um, we will have the 7 through 12 students coming in on Fridays to be in class with their teachers um, and peers. So K to 6 will be Monday through Thursday, face to face, Friday remote. 7 to 12 will be Monday through Thursday remote, Friday face to face. Um, understanding though that that you know that day does look different uh, for 7 to 12 on Friday and those days look very different for K to 6 Monday through Thursday uh, because of the social distancing requirements that we'll have masking requirements that we'll have etc and all of that information will be shared at our board meeting and will be available for you to see in the uh, in the reentry plan that we're going to put out today we did get some questions on <clears throat> um, you know maybe are you willing to entertain a different hybrid option a b a b c a b c a b or whatever that configuration might be and i can tell you that at this time we're, we're not entertaining a, a different hybrid option we've we've entertained them uh multiple times we had um many many people here in the district working on the committee the the teaching and learning committee and they reviewed all of those options and and basically have rolled them out for us i mean they might work for other places but we've landed on that hybrid k-6 7 through 12 option as the best option for Fairview School District. So that's the one that we are presenting to the board for their consideration. So of those two options, it will be up to the board. Our, 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 um, our plan is to show um, legitimate advantages and disadvantages to both options because they exist in both options. There are many good things in, in red, but then there are some things that, that aren't so great in remote, I should say. And there are many good things in hybrid and, and some not so great things as well. And we're gonna share all of those with the board and, um, and allow them to make an educated and informed uh, decision. Um, as far as um, the remote learning goes, one of the questions that we're getting is, how is this going to look different than it did last year? And I can assure you it's gonna look very, very different. And we're gonna get into those specifics on Wednesday night and show you how it's gonna look different. There will be face-to-face -face interaction on a daily basis with students. Um, there will be synchronous learning on a daily basis with students. There will be a schedule uh, for students every day. Um, there will be uh, attendance taken. There will be regular grading. Uh, it'll be very similar to um, you know, being in school, but you'll be learning from home in a remote situation. And the same with the hybrid. The hybrid looks um, a very similar. K to six will be coming every day, um, Monday through Thursday. They'll be separated, of course. Um, lunches will be served differently, and we're going to get into all those details, not only in the plan that that'll be posted, but also in our presentation on Wednesday night. Some of the questions that won't be addressed Wednesday night that I want to just take a second to address now. We're getting a lot of questions about what are the protocols for, um, for positive tests? What are the protocols for illness? Uh, what if a teacher gets sick? What if a student gets sick? What are you going to do? How are you going to uh, uh, quarantine or close off those spaces? Um, those are the questions that I've, I've been calling the what if questions. And, um, and I'll, be, I'll be honest, we, we don't have all of those answers yet. Um, a lot of that depends on the guidance that we get from the Department of Health. For example, we've had two confirmed cases that have been close to our Fairview family um, so far this summer. We had one student athlete who tested positive and we had a spouse of one of our coaches um, test positive. And in both cases, the Department of Health takes over. They, they, they have come in, they've done the, uh, the contact tracing on those. They've, made the, uh, the, they've had the conversations with the, uh, the families, the parents. Uh, they've contacted all of the close contacts of those people, and they've given us direction on on what to share with the community and what to share with uh, anyone that was involved in that situation. So, um, you know, I hate to say that it's going to depend on what the Department of Health tells us, but right now, that's our guidance. Our guidance is to lean on the health professionals for that information, and um, and and lead the way. Help us lead lead the way on on how to, uh, to how to respond as a district. So I, I can't answer all of those what ifs right now. I can tell you that, uh, you know, if if you're exposed um, or you've traveled to an area with with high COVID exposure or you have a, you're a close contact of someone, there is a 14 day quarantine requirement and, and we'll follow through with that. And uh, for for faculty, staff and students, um, we do know that we just don't quite know yet if if and when someone here at school gets it you know, what portion of the school needs to be closed, the classroom, uh, and how we, um, how we roll all that information out um, to families. 
we do know that there are some some differences with um, uh, with this particular pandemic and 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 the way um, HIPAA laws work um, because you're more interested in community spread here and you and you're more interested in keeping your community safe there are some relaxed HIPAA regulations there um, not that we're going to share the names of individuals but I think that we're permitted in this case according to the, the Department of Health we're permitted in this case to give more information to reduce community spread and keep as many people safe as possible when there is um, when there is a, a confirmed case in our in our community um, Another question that's been asked a lot of us that I, I don't have all the answers for, but I can touch on some of them, uh, is questions about the Cyber Academy. Uh, the Cyber Academy, as you know, has been something that's been a work in progress this summer. That's a new thing for us. We're not, you know, in the cyber business necessarily, um, but we're we're getting there. And and um, uh, the questions that have um, the ones that have really come up recently are: tell us the difference between uh, the Cyber Academy and the remote learning phase. Here's the big difference. The Cyber Academy is going to be more like what you would get on a um, on a, an online platform. There won't be necessarily synchronous live face-to-face -face instruction. That's going to be more of a self-paced guided program in cyber. Many of the courses are going to be developed by our teachers. Some of the courses are going to be supplemented with another program but it will be more of a self-paced guided program. There will be videos, there will be instructions, there will be links, but you're not gonna have that live teacher that you're gonna log into every day and, and, and correspond with and, and have a daily interaction with. That's in the Cyber Academy. In a remote learning phase, you will have a live teacher every day. There will be, and this is what's uh, you know significantly different from, from last year as well, you will have that live interaction one-on-one -on -one, um, or the teacher will be one-on-one -on -one with the class, um, and they will be teaching each day. You'll see, you know, live lessons at the board. There'll be discussions. There'll be small groups. There'll be breakout sessions. Not to say that that will take place the entire uh, period, um, but it will. There will be face-to-face -face interaction on a daily basis every period for your child in a remote learning situation. Much more will be explained um, uh, regarding that tomorrow night. In the um, uh, Cyber Academy. Um, what was the other question here? Uh, the other question was, how are you going to be able to come and go from that cyber academy? Well, I, I will tell you this. If, if, for, for, if we start off in a hybrid phase, students will be able to enroll in the cyber academy on day one. And they'll be able to um, uh, start their courses day one in, in, in the academy remotely, self-paced, etc. If the board elects to start off in a remote learning phase, we will delay the start of the cyber academy uh, because I personally feel, we personally feel that our remote learning will be, um, will be better. Uh, you'll have that live interaction with the teacher. And um, so we won't launch the Cyber Academy until, if and until we're in a hybrid or a traditional modified stage. So can you come and go from the Cyber Academy? We'd rather not um, because the, the curriculum isn't going to be completely aligned um, with what we're doing here. We just can't line it up sequentially quite the same as what we would do here in a, in a remote learning phase. So um, the option for the Cyber Academy will be, will be a nine-week option. You, we would ask families to make a 45-day commitment to stay in that so that there's not a, a lot of gap um, in the learning. We don't want those, those big learning gaps. We don't want you to leave Cyber Academy on Unit 3 and come back to, to us when we're still on Unit 2 or maybe on Unit 4. We just don't want those, those big gaps. Um, so those are the major differences between Cyber Academy and remote learning. Uh, another question that we've gotten is in regard to the YMCA and the child care program that they provide here in the district. Uh, we do have, um, uh, we are still uh, in, a, in a contract with the YMCA. We, we are offering the program here provided our students are coming to school. If our students are coming to school, whether that be in a traditional modified or in a hybrid situation, the YMCA will be welcome to bring um, their children to school as well. If our district is closed for whatever reason, if you know the governor closes schools for the, the you know Secretary of Education or Secretary of Health, then no students will be coming to school. But if we're in a remote situation here, also um, no students will be coming to our campus, and that would include the YMCA students not coming to our campus. So. That is a little bit up in the air, and I realize that's a, 
that's a hardship for some folks and uh, because they utilize that program. But if we're not going to allow our own children into our schools for safety and security reasons, it, it doesn't seem um, prudent to allow um, the younger children from the YMCA in the buildings as well. So uh, that's an update. That's where we are. I, I, I want you to know that um, all of these decisions and recommendations are um, are truly being made in what's what we feel is in the best interest of, of children and what's in the best interest of our faculty and staff here uh, in the Fairview School District. Um, this is not a, a politically driven decision by any means uh, from us. Um, um, it, it doesn't matter what uh, what anyone in Washington, D.C. or any place else thinks of, of, uh, of schools right now or where they should be. Um, this is the best decision for the Fairview School District, and that's what our board will be making on Wednesday evening um, when they consider the two options that are presented. Um, with that, uh, I hope that uh, all of the questions that you had are addressed. Um, we will share the results of the uh, most recent parent survey. Um, after the board has an opportunity to see it on Wednesday night, we will share that with the community. Um, the first parent survey, we never shared those results. I, I'll get those out. Um, they're kind of dated now, I suppose, and maybe not as relevant, but, um, but I'll get those out uh, this afternoon as well with the, uh, uh, the most recent reentry plan. So you can take a look at those if, if, um, if you have any interest. But again, they were from, uh, what, maybe May or June. So the results there, I, I quite honestly haven't looked at those for a while because so much has changed since then. But the, the new survey is, is pretty recent and you'll be able to see um, how many folks um, you know, would, would attend school in, in each of the three phases and where our uh, community um, kind of falls with our preference as to which stage we start in. So look for that information to be updated this afternoon on Schoology sometime probably around uh, before five o'clock. And um, uh, the board meeting, as I said, is Wednesday night, and there will be a link for uh, how to log on and, and watch that meeting. And, um, uh, you know, any other additional questions, obviously feel free to send those through. Uh, we're working very hard, uh, as, as I think that you know, all of our administrators, uh, every day, this is, this is our topic of discussion, and how can we most safely get kids back in school and, uh, and, and do our thing here at the district that, that I think we do really, really well. So um, hang tight. We're, we, we, we are hoping to have a very firm decision on how we start school on Wednesday, because that will give us f about a month, about four weeks, um, for us to plan for, for whatever that final decision is. Um, and whatever that final decision is, is not a permanent decision. That's a, that's a to start school decision. And I'm really looking at all of these options as a 30 day, um, let's ease, you know, let's get back into things for 30 days, reevaluate where we are at the end of September, and then make a determination for what comes next. So, um, so hang tight and, and, and tune in on Wednesday night to see that discussion. And uh, in the meantime, any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me at my email or, um, or Molly here at the, uh, my assistant here at the central office or any of the other administrators if you have questions and, and we'll try to get those answered for you and um, uh, incorporate them into our, into our presentation tomorrow night. So thank you. Have a great day and see you soon.